Welcome to Tuesday, July 9th, 2024. This day with a podcast is being brought to you by Wyoming State Parks. Why wonder about the outdoors in Wyoming? Explore the statewide interactive outdoor recreation wonder map to find your next adventure. The next adventure weather-wise is going to be the heat. You've been hearing about the heat in the news across the far western and southwestern and northwest parts of the U.S. and western Canada. It's slowly expanding eastward, and we're just going to run out of luck as what has been a cool start to the month of July will go and do a 180, as you'll see here in a moment. The high pressure and the heat dome that's been building over the west, but has been held up, is going to start to slowly spread eastward. The hottest temperatures of the year by far will occur over the next six days. We think the hottest temperatures will peak sometime around Monday. It may be Sunday, it may be Monday. By Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, we'll be able to take the edge off the heat, but it's gonna slowly build and reach its peak by late in the weekend and early next week. Now there's going to be a little bit of thunderstorm activity in the region between today and the weekend, but it's not the good kind. What do I mean by that? It's the type of thunderstorm activity that produces more lightning than rain. So you can do the math there. If we're going to get lightning in a heat dome with low humidity, that can be fire starters. So we've got to keep a really close eye on lightning induced forest fire activity over the next six days. Not saying it'll happen, but it's certainly on the table, something to watch out for. Now the subtropical moisture flow is coming to the rescue by next week. Some subtropical moisture is going to get into Arizona and New Mexico in the coming days, especially New Mexico, but spreading more towards the west towards Arizona, then eventually lifting more northward. That's going to happen slowly as well, but once it does, that will take the edge off the heat and bring rain producing thunderstorms back into the forecast next week. But for the next six days, boy, it's it, it's going to bake. This is going to be some extreme heat and you need to be ready for it. Nothing really to show you on the satellite image ever than the remains of Hurricane Barrel now going through parts of the eastern Corn Belt, headed towards the Great Lakes in the northeast. You can see it's quickly exiting the region. When we take a look at the water vapor loop, boy, you can certainly see where the axis of the high pressure is right there over California and the hot, dry air is starting to expand a little bit more to the east. Now notice on the water vapor, we still have a northwest flow along and east of the divide, and there is gonna be enough moisture for a little bit of isolated thunderstorm activity over the higher terrain, but the heat dome and the dry air is expanding ever so slowly eastward. So there's the hot dome near Las Vegas by noon today in terms of where the axis of the high pressure ridge is. As we take a look at areas to the east, it'll be cool and it will be wet in the nation's midsection, hot and dry in the west. So here's today, here's Sunday. So this is when the ridge of the axis, the axis of the high pressure ridge is gonna be right over the region and slowly heading eastward. And it's gonna likely be right on top of the divide and just east of the divide by Monday. And that's likely when temperatures will peak both sides of the divide in this region. We need that high pressure ridge to start to get a little bit further east. So the moisture flow, which is gonna to start to come back into Mexico, then the Southwest United States is able to come in. And that will, that will really take the edge off the heat and bring better chances of showers and thunderstorms, but it's gonna be a slow process. Now to put things in perspective, these are the temperature anomalies for the month of July so far. So if we were to say through the first eight days of July, it's been a colder than average July, over Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, the Dakotas, Nebraska, and Kansas, and even into parts of northern Utah. It's been a colder than average July so far. But you can see where the heat's been and bottled up. It's just been bottled up. So we're going to go and do a 180, and we'll erase this anomaly in five or six days. But as Mother Nature does, Mother Nature is the great equalizer. When you get one extreme, you're going to get the other coming on in. And then things average out at the end of the day. Remember, averages and normals are just basically put together by weather extremes, averaged out over time. But it has been a, a cool start to July, no doubt about it. But here comes the heat. These are the heat anomalies between now 
and going into early next week. So you can see all that red and that orange spreading eastward between now and early next week, eliminating the blue there. We do see patches of blue, especially in the southern areas. That's where the subtropical moisture is going to be in the showers and thunderstorms. If we step through the forecasted high temperatures from today, between now and Monday, we'll go one day at a time here. Here's the axis of the heat underneath the hot high pressure dome. So you can see these, these temperatures out here are really just about, well, today is going to be pretty close to average, maybe still a bit below average east of the divide. But we'll see this axis of heat, the purple and the gray colors, just slowly go eastward. So this is today. These are the high temperatures for Wednesday, high temperatures for Thursday. You can see the 90s and the 100s now starting to get to some parts of the eastern side of the divide. This is for Friday. This is for Saturday, Sunday. And then you can see Monday is when you see a lot of 100s along and east of the divide. We're going to have a lot of triple digits. There will be a lot of 100s. Places like the Bighorn Basin in Wyoming, eastern Wyoming, western Nebraska, northeastern Colorado, uh, the western slope, you're going to have some very hot temperature conditions. By early next week, temperatures not nearly as intense in California, but still hot nonetheless. So we're going to, let's step backwards. If we just go through today, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and into Monday. So you can see it's going to be a persistent and widespread heat. Be ready. Watch the elderly and pets, livestock. Make sure they're taken care of as this will be a prolonged hot spell. One good thing about, well, this is not necessarily a good thing, I guess, when it comes to wind power generation, but I know a lot of you are tired of the wind, but these are the peak wind gusts between now and Friday. So you don't see anything crazy there. You see a lot of peak wind gusts in the 20s, maybe a couple of 30s in there. When you get a big hot dome of high pressure like this, you have very weak jet stream winds aloft. The main jet stream is way up into Canada. So you're, you're not gonna get a lot of wind. So right when you want the wind to cool you off, you're not gonna get it. So there's not gonna be much wind over the next five or six days in this heat wave. By the time we get into Tuesday, Notice the high pressure ridge, the axis is now east. The clockwise circulation around the high now is gonna open the door. The door starts to open now to deeper subtropical moisture. And if we uh, loop the precipitate water, you can see all the brown, a little bit of white, but a lot of brown in the west as we go through the next four to five days. There's gonna be just enough moisture for those isolated thunderstorms as we talked about. But notice down here in Mexico, by the weekend, and then by early next week, here's the subtropical moisture. So that'll bring clouds, that'll bring better chances of rain producing showers and thunderstorms, but it's gonna be a while because we got all this dry air underneath the ridge. But when we look at Eastern Mexico here, then over time, that just starts to expand and head more west, northwestward, and then starts to curl back over, and that's when the showers and thunderstorms are gonna start to commence. But this is about a week away before the real deep moisture comes on in. Now I talked about these isolated thunderstorms. We're gonna have some subtropical moisture trapped down there. So there's gonna be some showers and thunderstorms. Same in Northwest Mexico, Southern Arizona. But the thunderstorm chances, when we get up into this area right here, it's in dry air. So while isolated thunderstorms are gonna be forming, this is for Wednesday. Over the higher terrain, these just don't tend to produce much rain. This is what it's gonna be on Friday. So there is gonna be some showers and thunderstorms underneath the ridge. This is for Saturday. Now we do get the deeper moisture getting into Arizona by Saturday and uh, parts of New Mexico. So there's gonna be some rain producing thunderstorms here, maybe up here as well. But these thunderstorms elsewhere, yes, thunderstorms are in the forecast, but don't expect much rain out of them. This is the total precipitation forecast between now and Sunday. So you don't have a lot of bright colors here. So you're just not gonna have good generation of any significant rain, but more lightning than rain in some of these showers and thunderstorms. The exception is gonna be a little bit further south, closer to the deeper moisture. By the time we get into Wednesday of next week, these are gonna be your rain producing thunderstorms. The deeper subtropical moisture comes in, 
This will bring better rain chances and this will cool us off. But this is something that's six, seven days away from now. So be ready for the heat. We'll talk about it more tomorrow. See you on Wednesday.